Welcome to my off-grid cabin. My name is Jim, and today I'm going to be taking you guys on a tour of the solar power system that I built that powers my little A-frame cabin. The system that I built is small and simple. It handles all of our power needs up here at the cabin. It runs our lights, our electrical outlets, it runs our water pumps, and it even runs an electric fridge. I've never had an issue with running out of power, but I've added something to this system that you don't see on a lot of systems that adds a little bit of peace of mind. And I'll show you that as we take the tour. If you're looking at designing and building your own off-grid solar power system to power your cabin or your tiny home, this video is for you. I'm going to leave links down in the description below to all the components that I use so that if you wanted to build something like this, you can. We'll start out here with the solar panels. I have two 410 watt solar panels and they're mounted to an eco-worthy solar tracker. This little solar tracker has been a fun component to the system. It's been working great. I've had it going for a few years now. Out here in the woods, I only get about four to five hours of direct sunlight a day and it's really helped me take advantage of that sunshine and keeps those solar panels where they're gonna be the most efficient. Our two solar panels are wired in series and the wires come down into this disconnect switch so that the panels can be completely disconnected from the system easily. From the disconnect switch, the wires run inside to our charge controller. So I'll take you in the cabin and show you that. It's important to note here that the cables from the solar go through a 50 amp breaker on their way to the charge controller. I put my charge controller in a convenient location here in my cabin so that I can always monitor what's going on with my power system. My charge controller is made by a company called Grape Solar and I've been running this for several years now since I originally installed the solar and it's been working great. It has a Bluetooth app that gives you a lot more information so you can monitor your efficiency and what your panels are putting out and everything. You can also access a lot of that information in the menu just by using the arrow keys. But this thing was pretty much plug and play. It automatically detects the voltage of your system. Wires come in from the solar, wires go out to your battery. You'll notice to the left of the charge controller is a remote switch that can turn my inverter on and off, which is a nice feature of my power inverter. This is my freezer to fridge conversion. And because of the shape of an A-frame, I got lots of space there behind the fridge. And I was able to locate the rest of my solar power system right there behind that fridge. So let's get that moved out of the way. Here's the rest of the components. This is a 12-volt system. And it's based on what you would find in a lot of RVs. And I did it that way for a couple of different reasons. For one, my cab is not much bigger than a lot of the large RVs that you see out there. So it seemed like a good fit for my cabin. And two, the components for RVs and 12 volt systems are pretty cheap and readily available. I was able to pick up most of this stuff on Amazon and was very was able to put together a very cost effective system. From our charge controller, our wires run down the inside of the wall to a disconnect switch. That disconnect switch is that red switch that you'll see right there just below the power inverter. And from the disconnect switch, it goes to our battery bank. My battery bank is currently made up of two Renogy 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries. These are AGM batteries and they've been working great for the last several years. But today, I'm excited about upgrading those to lithium. These are my new 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries from Lee Time, And I'm excited to give them a real world test. These things are heavy. Oh. Lee time was kind enough to send these batteries out to me so that I could share them with you. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. This isn't just a swap, it's an upgrade that should give me faster charging, 
more usable capacity, and a longer lifespan overall. AGM and lead-acid batteries should only be ran down to 50%, where lithium can safely be ran down to 10% or less, which almost doubles my usable capacity. If you want to check them out, I'll leave a link to these batteries and to lead time in the description below. The power then runs from the batteries through a 250 amp breaker to this Renogy 3000 watt pure scene wave inverter. And this inverter powers all of my electrical outlets as well as my fridge and any of my other 110, 120 voltage appliances. Down here in the bottom left corner is a breaker box. When the power comes out of my inverter and goes out to my outlets, it goes through a breaker box first, just as a safety precaution. Power splits and comes up through a breaker and into this 12 volt distribution panel. This is uh, just a fuse panel built for a marine application. And uh, this sends all the 12 volt power out to all the lighting and USB outlets that we have installed, as well as our water pump and the eco-worthy solar tracker is even powered by this. We have many standard 110 fixtures, like the lamp, and you can see these fixtures up above in the loft. And those are connected to 12 volt, and we just installed 12 volt bulbs. And so we can keep that nice finishes and the nice look and still keep it 12 volt. Now this is the component I've been excited to tell you guys about. This is the IOTA DLS30 12 volt charger. This is uh, made for RVs so that when you're plugged into shore power it can charge your batteries and get them all topped off. This is wired in and connected to the batteries and I have a plug-in that I've installed on the outside of the cabin and I can simply plug a generator in if I ever worry about my batteries getting low, if I go extended periods of time without sun, it's just a backup to make sure my batteries stay topped off and working. You don't see this in a lot of solar power systems. There's not a lot of backup opportunities other than switching everything over to a generator. So this is kind of a, a cool thing that I've added to my system to keep the batteries topped off and add a little bit of peace of mind. The only thing we have to change on this IOTA charger because we upgraded the lithium batteries is the charge controller and is a little component, ran about $20, and we simply unplug it and plug this one in. And now it's ready to charge from a generator and top off those lithium batteries. All of this system has been properly grounded. And although there's a lot of safeties built into the inverters and the batteries and even the charge controllers these days, I've added breakers in between as an extra safety precaution. Solar power can seem complicated, but most off-grid solar power systems, whether they're big or whether they're small, are made up of the same basic four components. You have your solar panels, your charge controller, your batteries, and your power inverter. It's important when you're designing a system that you build it to meet your needs. And we live pretty simply here. So this small system meets all of our needs. It runs everything that we needed to. I've never ran out of power, but it's because we live simply up here. We're not trying to run any big appliances, nothing uh, like an electric stove or a dishwasher or hot water heater. We have a lifestyle that matches the solar system that we designed. And so keep that in mind as you're uh, building yours. You may need more batteries if you're trying to run more things. You're going to need more panels, more batteries, and a bigger inverter, and probably a bigger charge controller. Everything just scales up. The components stay the same. But I think the real key to living on solar, and especially small solar and in small houses, is to live simply. If you're dreaming of living off grid or building a cabin of your own, I hope this video showed you that solar doesn't need to be complicated. Build it to match your lifestyle and live a simple life. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with somebody that might enjoy it. Thank you for watching. If you want a full tour of this cabin here behind me, check out this link right here.